Um, so talking about your students and the, the way they organize themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that they are very disorganized, like they get into the classroom, they just like abandon their stuff here and there. And don't you think as a teacher, it's your job for you to teach them how to be organized? Of course, I try my best to always tell them to arrange their stuff. And some even come to class and forget their books. Yeah. So can you even imagine that a student can, can come to school, bring their bags to school, and then when they want to go, they forget that bag in class. Wow. Yes, that's how they are. So sometimes I'm like, who has that bag? Big students, who has that bag? And so, oh, teacher, I know, I forget. Just like that, so. Maybe, maybe they need something like an incentive, right? Ah, uh, like, okay, if you put your chairs in order and if you pack your books, if you clean your shoes, then I'm going to give you this. If you do not do it, I'm going to do this to you. Hmm? So maybe with that, it might, it might encourage them to keep their things in order. Well, I think it's left for, for all of us as teachers in the school because I only try to encourage them with marks when it comes to English, yes. So when I want them to speak, I'm like, okay, if anybody speaks plus one. So they, they always try, like, they just want to say a word or a phrase. So that's, that's what I used to them to motivate them to speak. And so um, can you recall any particular moment that uh, a student or a group of students did something that make you laugh the whole day? That was so funny. That would only be when they come up to me and they want to say something to me, but they cannot say it in English. So when they speak in Thai and I don't understand, I say, okay, speak in English. Someone just then I say, teacher. <laughs> so that's just it. They're always, always like that. Always like that. I think that is the most, that's the most. And I have one student. When, whenever he comes to class, like every second, he's like, teacher, you okay? You okay? Okay, okay. So when he says it, even if I'm serious, it cracks me up. So if I'm, I don't, I cannot even say it. So, so sometimes I'm angry or no. They are just fun to be with, like all the time. Oh, they is, say funny things. Is the student saying, asking, are you okay? Or is uh, the student saying, you look okay? That's the only thing he can, he can say in English. So he's always asking, teacher, are you okay? You okay? Okay? Okay. So whenever I meet him too, even out of class, I'm like, you okay? Okay? So, yes. <laughs> so That's, I don't know what he means, but we are just okay in ourselves. <laughs> yes. So when you sit, are you okay? Yes. What does he respond? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, teacher. Okay. <laughs> that's fun. So that's, that's just how. So, okay. Um, so uh, let's... Um, go back into time a little bit, right? Um, how was your life like in your home country, Cameroon? Well, it was not very difficult, but we all know what's happening now in our country, like the crisis, the Anglophone crisis, and I'm from one of the Anglophone regions, so it was not really easy because it stopped a lot of activities. Like, people had side hustles. Me, I had a side hustle. So that kind of, it really demoralized everything. So it was, it's not very easy. It's not very easy back there. It was not easy. So, but I kept, I kept pushing. Yes. So it was uh, not easy. you mentioned about the crisis and uh, how seriously has this crisis affected the people of the area? <laughs> Like really bad or I think trying. serious is an understatement because a lot of things have stopped. Like people barely manage to survive. You have over 30 people in one house. It's not easy for all of those people to have something to eat even once a day. So it's not easy. Like it has stopped a lot of economic activities. And I think that has even affected the economy of the country. So people just die. Nobody's free. There's no freedom of speech. Everybody is in fear, like in constant, constant terror. 
before you hear this thing has happened here, everybody is already running. So it's really it's, serious. It's it's really serious. It's not. So and some places, some some areas have been like they have been abandoned. Oh, yes. So, so. Um, so uh, let's put it in a scale from one to ten, okay? And uh, before the crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, now that we have the crisis, let's say before was ten, okay? Yeah. And now with the crisis, so what number is it now? If before the crisis was ten, right now I would say it's three. Wow. Yeah. To hope things get back to normal. God help us. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> Or what were your reasons for leaving Cameroon to Thailand? Any particular reason? Okay, first reason for leaving is like staying in one place, seeing and knowing everything that is happening. I just feel like, okay, let me just go out and see how life can be in another place. Let me go and experience how life is out of home, away from home. How is it? How do other people live? I, w I, w just, I was just curious, like, okay, over here, we hear that this, 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 but how do the people here live? What about their culture and all of that? So I just left for the experience. That's wow. all. Want experience. To, want to explore. I like adventures. Yeah. So I just I wanted to experience it. How is life here? How is life there? So that's the first reason. Second reason. I was like, okay, we never know what can happen. Yeah, yeah. You might get out there and you get an opportunity. So instead of staying in one place and trying to deal with the crisis every day, if you have the means, why not go out? Exactly. Go out, just try to live like people out there. You might get an, an opportunity and just make use of it. Oh, that's so nice. those are the two reasons why I left. That's very inspirational. And... Uh, so, the, the, the country now you are, like, does it meet up to what you were expecting before you travel? Well, the first thing I was expecting is maybe I'll see a place where, you know what we see on TV yeah. or what we see on the internet. Yeah. So, all of those places that we see on the internet is like the luxurious places. Exactly. So, what I've seen is not like uh, too over-expected for the developed areas. Yeah. And what I've seen in the, like in the rural areas, I did not expect to see that kind of thing <laughs> on a serious note. Yeah, so I'm in the middle. The developed areas are okay. Although there are still some things that are not really up to standard there, but the rural areas, my God, I don't think there's anywhere in Cameroon, seriously. I don't think there's anywhere in Cameroon with the things that I've seen here. Examples, their houses. Like you see a house and you're wondering, my God, do people live here? So everything is not really up to expectation. But at least you have a job and uh, maybe in terms of uh, salary-wise, you are able to meet up with that one. Like what you earn is able to meet up with what you were expecting or meet up with your expectations? <laughs> or still not yet? What I earn is not up to my expectations because, first of all, when you're going somewhere and you're thinking, okay, first of all, I'm going here for, I want to experience life here. Yeah. Second thing, if I get an opportunity. So you start thinking of the opportunities that you, you can get there. Exactly. So when you think of the opportunities and you search, like you do your search, what I found out from my search is completely different from what I, I met. So the salary is not up to expectation. Okay. Yes, it's not up to. But let's say you are, you are still young here, right? You're just six months. With time, it will go. You know, maybe it might just take some time um, for it to get to what you, you are expecting or what you were expecting, right? Mm -hmm. But with time, it will grow. So um, after everything you've seen, right, are you still happy staying here? Are there moments that you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm lucky to be here? Of course. We have to be grateful for every chance that we get wherever we are, we are and no matter the situation in which we find ourselves. 
I'm, I'm just grateful and I'm happy because I don't get to hear the gunshots. Like, the terror has reduced, although I'm still traumatized by loud sounds. Like, when I get a loud sound, I'm, I, I shake and I'm like, oh, what's happening? Before I get to realize that, no, I'm not in Cameroon. I'm not in, yes, I'm not in Bamenda. Just, so I'm happy. At least there's, there's peace, there's tranquility. At least I have something. I have something I'm doing, and I know that at the end of, of each month, I can put something in my pocket. So, that's yes, I'm really grateful for that. Oh, that's great. That's With great. the way things are back home. You can never compare it, so I, I think it's better, it's better here. Yeah, it's safer here. Yeah, it's safer. Yeah. Um, so, if you had the opportunity to choose before okay. you came here, right, um, would you still have chose to come here or would you have, have chose to go <laughs> somewhere else? Well, we, we, always, we always have options and we always make our choices, but God decides. So, yes, let's just say I'm here because sometime, some time ago, I had the opportunity. I had, I had, let me not say the opportunity, I had a choice to come here, but yeah. I refused that I was not going to come here. Okay. Because I was looking at something bigger. Yep. But when I found myself where I was, I was like, okay, I'm just going to take anything, <laughs> even if it's to go to Chad or anywhere, I'll just go. So... I'm okay. So, so uh, the, the thing is like, uh, you became too desperate at a certain point that you wanted to just go anywhere. You were willing to take whatever comes your way. Yeah, <laughs> because it's really frustrating out there, to oh. be honest. But yes. many people will wonder, uh, a young lady like you, a beautiful lady like you, how come you were so desperate to go anywhere? Like, couldn't you have tried? Some other things? Any other thing? Well, I've never been an idle person. I've always laid my hands on, on other things. I've always tried other things. Like, I try all the time. There's never been a time when I'll say, okay, I sat for maybe a month or two without doing anything. Yeah. So when you try your hands on, on various things and nothing is moving, what do you do? I you try again. <laughs> try again. So I tried again and I came here. So... Oh, I'm okay, yeah. and I'm here. <laughs> I tried again. Well said, yeah. Um, talking about your job, right? Uh, mm -hmm. With all the um, challenges that you undergo, like mm -hmm. the visa change, the language barrier, sometimes the difficulties to communicate uh, with your students mm -hmm. or even to teach them. Uh, so do you think that the salary that you get can compensate for all these challenges? I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. Why? It might be okay for some, for some other person, but um, when you have, if you're somebody with a lot of responsibilities, yeah. I don't think it's, it's up to. Yes, because I have a, a, a lot of responsibilities. And sometimes when I even say, okay, let me just break this down to the least, like let me put this here, put this here to partition it. Yeah. It's not okay, but I'm still grateful. Yeah. At least I have something. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one, one good friend told me that uh, it's not how much you make that matters. It's how you can manage whatever you make. Of course. So you, some people can make so much, but they are unable to manage, manage it. it. Some people can make very little, but they are able to manage themselves and organize things well. So they will eventually be successful. Yeah. So let's hope you're one of those people that manage things very well. I'm certainly one of them. <laughs> certainly. <laughs> <laughs>